Yes. Hi, everybody. Gerdy Verwoerd here, their Great League Guide and Coach. And I am here with Lynn today. Uh, Lynn is a mountain hiker like myself. And um, she is an extraordinary, ordinary person. Just Thank like you. Me. Hello. <laughs> so, Lynn, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you in the world? And um, what do you do when you're not hiking? So I live in Paris. I've been in Paris for like 20 years. Uh, so originally I'm from the Philippines. Uh -huh. So I get married to a French guy. And so we moved in here. I have a son, 14 years old. Uh -huh. And I used to work in a corporate uh, company. Mm -hmm. It's a banking company before. So in between uh, working and uh, family, yeah. uh, I tried to have uh, me time, mm -hmm. time for myself. Yeah. And I found out the nature is the best time to spend uh, myself with, uh, you know. Yeah. So I go to nature. Basically, I started hiking in... Uh, well, I've just started hiking seriously in last year. Last year. So I'm not really a sporty person. So you have that obstacles, you know, fear of going alone, yes. you know, all this, all these things that you do in the first time you do it and you have no idea about it. Mm -hmm. So I try to train myself, uh, in Paris, walking alone in the city <laughs> yeah. at night, at dawn, you know, mm -hmm. anything to, to get used to myself being alone, actually. Yeah. yeah. So and then afterwards, go ahead. And afterwards, I kind of push that comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So I go to the forests. In Paris uh, or just outside of Paris? Because I know there's a couple of really big parks in Paris. Yes. Uh, there is two main, we call it Bois forests. Mm -hmm. It's Bois, Bois de Volon and Bois de Vincennes. So I kind of walk there on my own mm -hmm. just to get used to the idea that I'm on my alone on my own. You know? So what was that like for you to be, to be well, you know, it's, I know you've lived in Paris for a long time, but a lot of people would say, don't go out at night in a big city, you know, and certainly don't go out by yourself. Oh, it's, it's very safe, actually, if you, in the city itself. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, I prefer walking, uh, I prefer walking in Paris at dawn uh -huh. when everybody's asleep. Yeah, cities are beautiful. When, because it's, it's beautiful. It's different. It's different when, uh, because it's very touristic. So there are people everywhere during the day. Mm -hmm. So, so if you want to have a kind of solitude, you have to do it yeah. when everybody's asleep. So yeah. it's safe. It's very safe, actually. So, I've never had any uh, bad experience with regards to uh, walking at night or walking at dawn. No. You trained yourself. Um, just by going by yourself into the city, into the forests in Paris, in the parks in Paris. How did you graduate to um, mountains? Uh, so it's, how can I say that? Um, it's also for my, uh, because I went through several problems, uh, personal work related and stuff like that. And I went through a kind of, uh, have so much anxiety, mm -hmm. yeah. stress, uh, depression. Mm -hmm. So it got to the point where, uh, you know, uh, uh, I couldn't, uh, I think if I wouldn't take care of myself, mm -hmm. I would end up <laughs> seriously sick. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so, uh, uh, there was a there was a time in the last year, mm -hmm. uh, no, 2016, to the, December 2016, mm -hmm. when I really said, uh, okay, uh, if to myself, I said to myself that if we don't take care, like I'm talking to two people in my head, you know, yeah, uh, if we don't take care of ourselves, you know. 
this is really bad. Yeah. So that's how that's uh, I pushed. I really pushed through work, uh, walking and hiking, mm -hmm. and I stick to the mountains because uh, when I was into this depre depression state, mm -hmm. I was looking for. I was searching in Google and uh, stuff like that too. Yeah. Understand this kind of uh, situation, mm -hmm. and I came across. Uh, a quote, uh, a quote from the Dalai Lama mm -hmm. that says that at least once a year go some place where you've never been to. Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, uh, since <laughs> why not do it once a month, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of once a year, once a month, but not, not totally very far, mm -hmm. but some place where you've never been to. Yeah. So I've decided to do, uh, I, that was 2006, December 2016, and then I set a goal mm -hmm. to myself, and I said, okay, in 2017, let's do 12 mountains. Okay. 12 mountains. So it's like one mountain mm -hmm. a month. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily per month. I, I went out because it's, uh, it, depends on my, it depended on my schedule and uh, my family's yeah. schedule. Mm -hmm. So, but at least 12 yeah. in that period, you know. Yeah, I understand, yeah. So I, I, I went into that, and I, I, I stick to that goal. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> by, <laughs> by, this, by November 2017, I've completed that, uh, that uh, 12 mountains goal. Wow. So you went from the parks? So from the parks, from the parks, because uh, it was, you know, when you started doing it uh, often, it gets, it gets kind of boring. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Especially <laughs> that it, well, you're not really isolated. So you're still distracted by all these um, the things you see every day. Yeah. So it, I thought it was better if I'm really in a place where my challenge is pushed and I'm on my own and there's a kind of risk yeah. <laughs> where I could get focused uh -huh. and it just really distract myself of the, of the, the problems and just get focused on something. So I, so I took to the mountains. Yeah. My first, my first hike, it was in Thailand, but I wasn't, I wasn't really alone. Mm -hmm. I was with my family. Mm -hmm. And we hike it somewhere in uh, somewhere in Kusamui, I think there was a okay. hiking trail there with my husband. Mm -hmm. so that was my first hike, and then afterwards, uh, I didn't I didn't explore the mountain uh, directly on my own. I had to have a kind of somebody with me to gain confidence, you know. Okay. <laughs> so I started with my husband, and then I with a couple of friends. Mm -hmm. until until i get used to the terrain and what it's like there completely yeah. and then i said like i can do it i can do this on my own mm. so i went to mont blanc but not not really a multi day hike it's just day hike yeah. because uh, because it's just to give myself a, a sense of security that I can still go back to a refuge and sleep there at night. I won't be stuck in the mountains, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't really completely push. I do it slowly, step by step, one step at a time. Yeah. So uh, what you're saying is when, you feel, when you've learned enough to feel secure, that's when you take the next step. Because, uh, you know, there's, that, there's always that fear, you yeah. know, there's always that fear. So, in the whole, I, I realized that uh, how, how can I overcome this fear? Mm -hmm. So I kind of break down all those fears. Yeah. So I was, I was scared of going alone. Mm -hmm. So I trained myself in Paris and in the, the, the yeah. surrounding forest mm -hmm. to overcome that fear of being alone. Yeah. And then fear of not physically fit enough to mm -hmm. hike a mountain. Yeah. So I trained myself into alternating running uh core exercise yeah. and long distance hiking mm -hmm. studying the what food to you know fueling 
Yeah. You know, what to food to eat, to eat. Just to overcome that fear that I'm not fit enough. Mm-hmm. And then there was this fear that, uh, what should I bring? Um, is this correct? My, you know, the gears that you have to bring with yeah. you. So I did a lot of research on that. And <laughs> so I kind of just break down all those little uh, obstacles mm-hmm. and then uh, overcome it one by one until, you know, until I found myself in the mountain one day, <laughs> yeah. all, all by myself. Yeah, and and it, was, it was amazing. It was, well, the first time I did a uh, bivouac, when I camp, the first time I camp. Uh, alone in the mountain in uh, Grenoble, mm-hmm. somewhere in Grenoble, yeah, in the Ron Alps. Mm-hmm. It was it was uh, stormy. Mm-hmm. There was rain. There was it was foggy. It was my first wow. time was completely uh, you really experienced failure. It was a complete failure because uh, it was although I checked the weather ahead. Yeah. And it says, uh, it's, you cannot really predict what's, what will happen, you know. Mm-hmm. So when I arrived in the mountain, I was incomplete. I was, I had, uh, my gear was complete. I had raincoats and everything. Yeah. But uh, there was lightning. I even studied what to do mm. when there is lightning. <laughs> and then, yeah, I reached, I didn't reach the summit I wanted to, to yeah. go to, but uh in the end, I just I just stop somewhere in the middle mm-hmm. and just camp under the rain. Yeah, yeah. It was it was uh, for me it was uh, it wasn't really a failure. It was an experience mm-hmm. because I learned a lot. It's yeah. during this uh, kind of challenging situation that you actually learn a lot, you know. So, so it was uh, <laughs> that situation because that was your first. You say that was your first real time in the mountains, and you got. Everything that people are scared of in the mountains, you know, fog and rain and lightning and, um, and those wind. are, yeah, and wind, exactly. And those are all the situations where people are like, isn't that dangerous? And how do you find your way when it's foggy? And, and what do you do when there's lightning? So, um, what lessons did you take from that? Well, uh, because I was, before that, because I was already planning to do this thing, so I really prepared for that. Uh, I did practice hiking with my, when it's raining outside. Yeah. I went outside to be complete with my gear. Mm-hmm. I went outside to, you know, just to be in the rain. Yeah. Just, just to feel how it. it's like. It's, yeah. it's, it's in next to the forest, next to Paris, but it was, but the weather was cold raining so i went out to practice what it's like to be under the rain and Mm -hmm. and how to you know adjust with your you know your gears yeah when it was freezing i went out Mm -hmm. to check what it's like yeah and then um before i come out i took i took the tent first time i took i bought a tent and i took it in the in the woods Mm -hmm. and practice how to yeah install it yeah. How to set it up. Mm-hmm. And I timed myself, you know, I had a timer. Yeah. Just to, because I was anticipating that if it rains, you need to do it fast. So that all your kids would wow. get wet. So I practiced all that. And then I was, the first time I did that, uh, there was plenty of mosquitoes. Mm-hmm. And that's the first time I realized, ah, mosquitoes is another factor in you. <laughs> Yeah, but it was safe. It's safe actually in the mountains. Yeah, as long as you, like you, you know, you have to be a little bit prepared. You You have to have common sense. You have to have common sense and you have to um, uh, to know what you're doing. So you went, you didn't go into the mountains by yourself to sleep in, in the mountains as well until you felt that you knew what you were doing. Yes. So you, know, you have to you have to prepare it. I mean, you have to be responsible enough, you know, yeah. because you're going alone. Exactly. And and it's not worth the risk if you will just end up injured or you know. Yeah. You have to do your research. Mm-hmm. You have to do your practice. You have to be responsible because otherwise you'll just end up uh, having an accident, maybe. Yeah. 
is if you're going into the mountains unprepared and being unresponsive, then all of a sudden the mountains can be dangerous. Yes. It's, you know, it's sort of like um, you don't drive a car in the road until you know how to do it. And when you know how to do it, it is a relatively safe thing to do. Yes. If and you, you need to no be... Idea, you need to be flexible, you know, you have to be prepared that even if you set, you set yourself, I will go to this, mount, let's say, Mountain A, but because of the weather conditions, there are uh, unforeseen uh, conditions that you have no control over, yeah. and you have to be f flexible and then, you, you know, I'll just cancel it, you know. Yeah. The mountain won't go away, actually. No. Do it next time. Exactly. So, looking back, um, on your mountain experiences because uh, I know you so last year you did uh, 12 mountains in a year and I know you have participated or you are participating in the 52 hikes challenge because I didn't know about that but I found it through you and I may have to do that next year I didn't uh, yeah I, I wasn't aware that there is such a thing it's based in the it's a community uh, based in the USA. Yeah. So when I was on my 12th mountain, you know, in a, in a run in the Rhone Alps in yeah. France, mm -hmm. uh, I was already thinking, uh, what should I do next? Yeah. I have to go on because I had such a good time. I had so a wonderful time, you know, that I said, I have, to, I have to continue. But at the same time, maybe I, I should have also set a goal, but level level it up yeah. <laughs> just to so i keep i keep searching on that's how i came with the women's hiking group yeah. etc because there's plenty of it and then i i came across the 52 hike challenge so i said oh i'll 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 part i'll do this i'll do this uh challenge yeah so now i'm on my 41st uh they are not totally mountains per se no, just, just yeah yeah I did the idea is just you hike you hike in nature once a week just yeah. you know give your time yeah uh, one day you, I mean you have seven days just give that you know one day to spend in nature exactly exactly so that's I'm um, that's a, what and we're in I'm just looking at my calendar 41 hikes you said right well, yes 41 so you're doing pretty good Yes, I have actually, I started it in November last year, so I have to finish the 52 by November. Okay. Wow. So, I won't so tell yeah. You if you don't mind, you know. So, how many, how many left? 11. What is one of the best experiences that you've had in, on a mountain hike or in, on a hike? Every month. <sighs> Every one of them is best. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot, uh, it's, it's, it, every, I don't know, even, even if it's not a mountain, uh, even if it's just a forest, mm. flat, uh, yeah, I, it's uh, always exhilarating for me, you know. What is one thing that you would recommend um, people that want to start out hiking uh, but have never really hiked before? What is the one thing that you would recommend them to do? Okay, so just do it slowly. Mm -hmm. Like uh, do it with a, get somebody, with, uh, have a friend maybe, or join a, a group, beginners, mm -hmm. and, and do it. But uh, it's such a way that you, are, you, are, you kind of have, have fun, not something that shocks you, you know, because it could turn into something traumatic experiences. Ah, the first time I did it, it was so awful. You try to have fun mm -hmm. when, you, when you do it the first time. Yeah. And uh, get a friend or because, you know, I have a lot of friends who are saying, ah, I can do it alone. So, okay, let's do it together. And then just do it like in a such a way that you're having fun. You actually forget that you're walking or you're hiking because yeah. you have so much fun that uh, yeah. don't make it like a, a work, a kind of work. Mm. It's not an assignment. It's supposed to be fun. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, yeah, it's something you have to, yeah. Yeah, it's not homework. Exactly. So I, and the last two questions, um, 
your favorite book or movie about um, nature or hiking? The book I've read uh, on hiking is the, what's the name? I got? Into the Wild, I think. Is this? Yeah. Um, there's, in, there's a book called Into the Wild. You also mentioned um, Into the Wild is about this guy that. Um, I know, not that one. He's by himself in, uh, in Alaska, I think, in a bus. I know, not that one, not that one. You mentioned Grandma's Gate. Grandma Gate. That one also. Yeah. I have three, I think, because uh, I'm bad in memory. In <laughs> this is my problem. The memory. And uh, the Camino Way, I think. Uh huh. I, I think there's a book that's called The Way, or a movie that's called The Way, and that's about The Way. Yeah, and that's about the Camino de Santiago de Compostela. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. also mentioned Grandma Gatewood's Walk, which that's is, a great book. Ah, yeah, that's a lovely book. I love it. Yeah, it's um. <laughs> Well, tell us about what, what it is about, because I can tell it, but you, you mentioned it. Well, it's, you know, it's this, uh, it's a sad history for her, you know, in terms of family and husband yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But she was, she was, uh, she started really late. Yeah, when, in the uh, 60s or something? Or 60 even something. When all her kids were a grown up, or I think she was already a grandma, yeah. and she decided to do the 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 hike. So I think it's her courage that uh, attracted me to it. Yeah. So Grandma Gatewood was a somebody from the Midwest, I think, in the United States. Yes. Old lady in her sixties, and she had sneakers on, and she and, and just you know. <laughs> yeah, and it's the, that old fashioned. <laughs> Uh, knapsack, really, a uh, stick knapsack, uh, yeah. on it. Yeah, and she went on hike to Appalachian Trail. Yeah. So she's, yeah, that's uh, very inspiring. Yeah, it is. It's just... Thank you. <laughs> was so I'm sticking with that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. People, this was um, Lynn in France from the Philippines. And um, like I said, she turns out to be an extraordinary, ordinary person. As always, go there greatly and be safe out there.